Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tales from the Forgotten Troop. It's a bit a while since we've seen all of you. Welcome back. Happy New Year. It's now the 2023 of the future. And yeah, we're going to get into some sad vampire boyfriend, but a few notes as per the huge before we get started. Um, a few programming notes. This will be our last episode. Welcome to Salem. I'm interested to see what happens. <laughs> like I think everyone else is. Since we left off at uh, things building up to a pretty intense climax with the protests and revolution coming. Um, Lee and Remick, over the course of our break, decided to move on to pursue their own projects. And we wish them the very best in their efforts and pursuits. That's redundant, but we'll go with it. Uh, coming up next on our schedule, we're going to be doing a one-shot of, well, what will hopefully be a one-shot of You're Not a Wizard, which was written by David, I'm sorry, in advance. Issa Rae. <laughs> Thank you. Issa Rae uh, from Curious Lichen Games. So we're, that's going to be chaotic and we're looking forward to doing that. And... Coming relatively soon in the future, our next long campaign is going to be using the masks system from Magpie Games. So, um, not going to give away too many spoilers, but we're excited for some uh, decade-specific superheroes. <laughs> Start uh, putting your guesses in now. <laughs> Whoever gets correctly... <laughs> Whoever Who wins the satisfaction of being right. Yes. <laughs> get bragging rights. Bragging rights. Bragging rights. <laughs> I would say maybe we can give you a crown, but I don't know if there's any reasonable way to give you a crown. I, I can make a paper hat and mail it. There I we guess. go. <laughs> Love it. A one yes. of a kind Maria original paper <laughs> crown. Paper, it, it's a hat. I you just have to draw to crown. the crown onto the hat so that it's Oh, a yeah, crown. yeah, yeah. Yes. That'll, that'll work. <laughs> Made out of sticky notes. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's what I have on hand. Yep. A sticky mm -hmm. note crown. <laughs> Hashtag goals. <laughs> yeah. Big goals. Big All goals. The goals. Um, if you would like to help support the show, we are Hero Forge Affiliates. So there is a link in our Twitch About section or the description of the YouTube video if you're watching this in the future future you can order yourself a nice mini for a holiday a birthday if you're just feeling like it if you want to treat yourself and we get a little bonus or you can become one of our coffee members and get access to exclusive content some of which includes vod's of special episodes we aired in the past which cannot be found anywhere else as well as our most recent post which was some backstory about egon and his <laughs> creation i feel like it creates more questions than answers but there are some <laughs> answers in there i think <laughs> and lastly if you are watching the vod on youtube you can catch us live on twitch weekly now on sundays Ooh. That's also a change. I should have mentioned that earlier, but now we're going to be live on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And also, Twitch subscribers and Kofi members have a special chat on our Discord, so you should join our Discord because that's free, or pay us money and have a special chat. But it's free to join to talk to us anyway. <laughs> or you, you can just, give us money. You just get an extra <laughs> special exclusive chat. And roll. You get a special role, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your name will be a unique color. A different color, <laughs> yeah. Not so. yellow. Also, we'll commit <laughs> to remembering it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in an effort to remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so before we jump into the recap and so we can get started, let's go around and have all of you introduce yourselves because Come I've on. forgotten who you are after three weeks <laughs> off. So please remind me. Do you have a character question for us today? I, I don't. Right. Um, 
I don't know. It's... What is your character's New Year's resolution? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> do with that what you will. Uh, let's start with... I don't know. Does anyone want to go first? Anyone super excited to go first? I'll go. Um, I'm Brianna. I play Tori, and Tori's New Year's resolution is to drink more. <laughs> <laughs> Tori's New Year's resolution is to give herself a permanent blood alcohol content. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a permanent buff you take with you into the world, and it gives you bonuses for certain activities. Oh, does it? Like fending up vampires. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> you can get them drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Are, is Bree the roofie? <laughs> oh. oh my god. Bree's the party. Tori's the party. <laughs> oh, the, sorry. Oh my god, it's already happening. See, I told you. I don't remember who you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maria. I'm Maria. I play Michael. And Michael's new year resolution is to travel more. Preferably out of the country. Quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> on a private jet. <laughs> to say, and on a private jet. Specifically That's to odd, France. Oddly specific resolution <laughs> and travel, form of travel, but no. <laughs> okay, Jenna. Um, so I'm Jenna and I play Amarantha, and Amarantha's New Year's resolution is to um I don't know. She's she's got a pretty great life. Um, maybe take her two favorite people in the world on vacation. Oh, on vacation, <laughs> take her two very specific plane to France. <laughs> Private chat to replace her dead parents <laughs> with vampire parents. What? What? Blake and Louie. Blake and Louie. 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 I was going to say. This. Some weird the, the bluey ship. The bluey ship. <laughs> At first, that was say... necromancy. <laughs> no, I was like, this is some weird vampire Frankenstein's monster thing. <laughs> I mean, going to bring your you're parents not back wrong, Blake and Louie. Oh. No, my first thought was <laughs> vampire versions of the parents. <laughs> Might be a little too late for that. <laughs> too soon. Okay. Last time. Aurelio, Tori, Michael, and Blake went to the Airbnb to get things in order while Vlad and Amarantha went to meet with Isla. The four of them went through the arduous process of choosing rooms before Michael and Aurelio decided to stress bake and Tori went about making some wards. The meeting with Isla was much more intense than Amarantha was expecting, especially since Vlad didn't give her any information beforehand. Isla had some rather difficult questions to ask of Amarantha, essentially grilling her about her business and her experience. When the group reconvened, they went to the airport where they finally picked up Louis and had not the most fun ride back to the Airbnb. Some more slightly uncomfortable conversations happened before Amarantha and Vlad left on their date, leaving the Airbnb to potentially descend into chaos amidst Yu-Gi-Oh! battles and Mario Kart competitions. Which we love. Mm -hmm. Ideal. We, lo we love for you. We mm -hmm. love that for you. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, um... Amarantha and Vlad came back from the date. Things happened and we kind of coming. Things got busy as we are quickly fast. Wow. We're quickly approaching the protests and the potential revolution. So going into a bit of a preparation montage. I will say that a day or two after... Vlad and Amarantha's date. Vlad and Aurelio decided to go on a date, but then Vlad disappeared in the morning, leaving a note that he was going about his business and wouldn't be returning in the midst of everything. And 
a few days beyond that, Aurelio also left a note that he was going to take his descendants and headed west out of Salem. So, is there anything... I mean, I have some ideas of things that are going to happen during this montage, but is there anything any of you had any immediate concerns the rest of you had so many <laughs> this very dramatic music <laughs> which one of me blake and louie is gonna be watching Am- amarantha on her well i figured Maybe. that now that <clears throat> uh now that some people have left abruptly um we should probably rethink the plan. I was gonna say revamp, but you know. <laughs> <Same thing>. No. <laughs> My vampire boyfriend too revamped. Be furious. Re- revamping. <laughs> too fang, too furious. Leave <laughs> meeting. <laughs> locked that's valid <laughs> uh if we still if you still want to meet with constantine i could just hang out in the shadows we could all just go we yeah. could put tori and louie on the roof doing ranged watching and or shooting arrow i don't or throwing knives whatever throwing curses what, whatever Steak crossbow. Steak crossbow. crossbow. Sounds dangerous. Well, that's gonna have to be part of our prep now. <laughs> Leave meeting. <laughs> that that JK, is also I'm, fair. I'm here for this. Valid. Uh, and then I, I was thinking, this. Michael and, and Blake on the ground. You know, in the shadows. Yeah, that it's that works for me. Be careful. Because everybody's on the up and up with the plan. Do Blake and Louie agree? Do Bluey yeah, should, agree to the plan? Him. <laughs> uh, Louie <laughs> is very much like, hell yes, I'm going to be present for this. Um, Blake is like, yeah, got nothing better to do. <laughs> sure. It's either this or keep eating Cheetos on the couch. You can't and... eat Cheetos from the shadows. It's too... Crunchy. It's loud. They're too yeah. orange. They get some cheese, maybe. Some nice, quiet string You'll cheese. Smell you can eat. I'm just, now I'm imagining like limited edition Cheetos that are just like neon green. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. It's just Shrek like the Jell O. Yeah, Shrek Cheetos. Uh, uh, Shrek ketchup was bad enough. Ugh. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I blocked that out intentionally. Uh. <laughs> it, it, you know, it comes up at work more often than you would think. <laughs> I bet the Shrek ketchup comes up a lot in a variety of situations, most of which involve eating it first. Yeah, well, it was the two thousands. <laughs> I mean, we had I'd... we had purple ketchup too. Ugh, <laughs> the gateway. The gateway yeah. color. Gateway. That the, was gateway the gateway ketchup. Oh, <laughs> no! okay. We're getting off track. <laughs> so. Moving on. Yes, you can go. I mean, you're just going to go like wander the streets at night. Wander the streets of Salem at night. Uh, Well, yeah. No, yeah. I was actually going to. He's probably hanging out by the flat. I was just going to sit on the front porch and wait for him to show up. Oh, yeah, don't open that door. I'm not going to open the door. Okay. It's... If he pisses me off, I'll tell him he can go in, and then I'll just watch what happens to him. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> you go and pop a squat on the porch while everyone else is, uh... Oh, I guess... We've got a porch swing. Waiting. It's very classy. She's, you know... Very nice. Wearing a short and long sleeve dress with tall boots. You know, very classy. Very fall appropriate. <laughs> yep. I okay. It. I um, yeah. She'll have pulled up in the Bugatti. I assume <laughs> that they took the other vehicle. So it looks like she's by herself. Okay. Okay. 
So you're sitting on the swing. I should be switching tunes here. Um, sitting on the swing, just hanging out. Mm-hmm. There's a, a bit of a breeze. She feels a little... Got a little more chill in the air than it should since it's just the beginning of October, really. That mm. we're... Egon, stop. Oh. <laughs> He's just floating through my, like, <laughs> head. <laughs> Egon's with Tori. I know. <laughs> Ghost hat. Ghost hat. Oh, yeah. But... <clears throat> just sitting there swinging and several minutes pass before a voice right behind your ear says It's pretty dangerous being out here on your own. She's going to swing back a little bit harder than she should to knock into him. <laughs> you, you swing, you swing back and a hand catches the back of the swing and just stops it in place. Careful dangerous there. for who? <laughs> I think Constantine, we... I presume? That's one of many names. Of course. But I'm sure you're familiar enough with that concept. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh I think you do. I mean, Have a seat, the... Connie. Can I call you Connie? Let's <laughs> pick a better name with like a shortening that isn't so, you know, whatever. It's fine. He... Constantine, whatever. Sit down. <laughs> he lets go of the swing and uh, and walks around in in front and sits sideways in the swing so he's facing you. Mm -hmm. Has one arm like propped up against the back of the the back of the swing. What does he look like? What is he wearing? What's the outfit situation? <laughs> like <laughs> Tell me everything. He is wearing black jeans, some not big boots but some boots with like a little bit of a heel mm -hmm. has a a light gray like slight v-neck henley tee underneath a longer black trench coat what does he look like he's got some darker blonde hair. It's pretty closely cropped. Mm -hmm. um, hazel eyes. Mm -hmm. Pretty not super outstanding features or anything. Kind of, kind of plain. But fair. So, what brings you to our flat on this fine night, Constantine? I don't know what brings you here. You've been uh, keeping away from it. Well, you know, we had a break in. Yeah, tough luck. Yeah, and you're still just hanging out on the porch. Pretty ballsy. Mm. Yeah, well. I am capable of taking care of myself, Constantine. So what were you looking for? Hmm. 
nothing in particular, just... Sending a message. Not really, I wouldn't call that sending a message, just... Seeing what I could find. Seeing find anything what... interesting? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Mm -hmm. You and uh, all your little friends have lots of interesting secrets. Uh, we're actually pretty boring. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say so. Oh, well. I mean, compared to all the other humans out there. Well, what can we say? We've got lots of hobbies. So, who sent you? In general or today? In general, then today. I'd like both answers. Well, no one today. In general, I really haven't gotten I get a nice paycheck, but it doesn't cover everything I do. It's fair. So, who's writing the check, Constantine? Who do you think? Brando? Ding, ding, ding. So <laughs> boring and predictable. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? He's a. Uh, His name's Brando. <laughs> wants to hold on to seat of power and doesn't have the skills to do it alone. He really should have uh, gathered better better uh, allies before his seat of power was threatened, but. It's neither here nor there. Hard to find allies when you're a regent. Especially from other regions, you know? And he's, I'm sure you've noticed, no, oh, what inspires a lot of confidence. No, he's That's very, very incompetent. Money buys protection. And resources. Yeah. It sure does. It sure does. So Elton's not paying you? <laughs> no. No. How much are you being paid? Why do you ask? Well, I think you came here for more reasons than just to stalk us. Because you're bored. It's interesting. Yes, life gets boring after a few centuries, I'm sure. <clears throat> For some people, it gets boring within a couple decades. That's fair. And those aren't even the ones who live beyond the first century. <clears throat> so what is uh, Brando paying you to do? Just investigate, squash the rebellion? Keep an eye on... People he's worried about. Maybe do some digging. Take care why... of any uppity folks. <laughs> Is that why you're here? As far as what? To get rid of you or just to investigate or all of the above? Call me, call him B. I assume if you investigate us and find something, then he'll want you to get rid of us. Depends on the nature of what I find, really. Hmm. Why he did he want you to investigate us? I think you know the answer to that. 
I mean, just look at the company you keep. Yeah, she looks at him. <laughs> she like looks him up and down. You're not wrong. <laughs> well, I know that Brando's lived a long time, but if I had to hedge to guess, I have more money than him. He is the president of a community college. <laughs> yes, very impressive. <laughs> community college <laughs> I'm sure it pays very well let's talk let's talk numbers Constantine what it'll cost to buy your allegiance and then I'll tell you what I need you to do <sighs> hmm He looks you up and down. Let's go. Let's go big five. That sounds good, right? Five mil? Yeah. No problem. This will entail giving fake information to Brando, reporting on his movements. In addition, I need you to kill Elton. <laughs> In 10 days. Not before that. So wait 10 days and then kill him? Mm-hmm. Fake information to Brando. Report on his movements to you, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And then after 10 days, go head to head with Elton. Well, you don't have to go head to head. I mean, stabbing people in the back is just as effective. Mm, I didn't mean it literally. What are you planning to do with the aftermath? Why do you care? Weighing my options. You you like the chaos. I'm sure that it will be very interesting. I'm going to say, um, it's very much a get a vampire to do something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can spend three with a consequence or five without. Oh, oh, chaos. Jenna wants consequences, but Jenna who... <laughs> Hmm, hmm, hmm. I will ask, Reed Maria, do we want a consequence or no consequence? It's the last episode. Consequence. <laughs> I don't know. Bree, you're, you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want a consequence with this person specifically. Yeah. But... I don't know if I want a consequence right now. Like, I'm fair for the consequences, but maybe not with Constantine because I, I don't trust Charlie as far as I can throw them. I trust Charlie with my life. <laughs> you trust me with your life. You don't trust me with your character's lives. There's a difference. Probably not. Totally no. <laughs> Totally different expectations. Absolutely. All right. Well,
Does this qualify as something dangerous, meeting with Constantine? I need to ask because I need angst. <laughs> I do have enough to spend right now. I'm just saying. Hmm. Or is this antagonist? Well, he's not authority. He's not authority. No. I mean, he did sneak up behind you all creepy like and make some threats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I sure. can slam, try to slam him with my swing. <laughs> sure, I'll say. Okay. This can be get yourself in. Then the I will. Here. I will spend five. And... I'll be. Just throw out the rules. It's the final episode. Chaos. We're off the rails. I can say that Tori would absolutely consider this to be I'm getting herself in danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tori's freaking out. <laughs> Tori's not happy. <laughs> Tori's not real. <laughs> oh, that's also true. That is true. <laughs> Tori is a figment of all of your imaginations, audience. But, you know, neither is Constantine <laughs> or any of this game. <laughs> Everything is fake. It's all, it's me. It's been me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> all right i have spent the angst i rolled two angst so i have paid for no consequences this time okay he leans forward and says all right got yourself a deal and She'll hand him a card with her phone number on it. A burner phone, not her regular phone. <laughs> he doesn't get the real digits. He, like takes it between two of his fingers and like turns the card um like on each side just looking at it. It smells pretty. <laughs> Sniffs and it. It's, and it's pink. <laughs> just like shoves it in his coat pocket. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. And nice to meet ya. Gets up and disappears into the shadows. And then Amarantha will take off in the Bugatti, and then I assume they all come out of the shadows and take the Land Rover back to. Are we staying in Boston or do we stay in one of the Salem? Or did we move to Salem again? Hmm. Probably safer <laughs> to stay in Boston. Yeah, and to like the actual staging of the uh, thing. Yeah, until we get up on the protester. Great. Yeah. Well, just for can... funsies, she's going to drive to the other Airbnb, just in case he's following her or there's creepy. I mean, he's a little bit creepy. He's a stocky, <laughs> stocky guy. So it's a stocky stalker. Stocky, 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 stocky stalker. stalker. <laughs> You don't have the cheekbones to be this creepy, okay, Constantine? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. Your jawline is lacking. <laughs> well. <laughs> He's not as creepy as Elton, I will say. I think Elton's more attractive, but creepier. You can reconvene at the Airbnb. All right. Okay, now we have to watch Charlie flirt with themselves and Blake <laughs> and Louie because, you know, we all need this in our lives. <laughs> I'm not and sure we... they're at flirting point yet. But... No, probably not. Their flirting is still just an aggressive Yu-Gi-Oh duel. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> uh, anything else anyone had immediately in mind? or things you wanted to montage. Um, um, I assume Isla got stood up too. Mm -hmm. If so you if you don't contact her. Okay, I was going to say if you don't reach out to her, she's going to reach out to you. So, I was going to say do we have a way to contact her? Yeah, I yeah, have her I, number. I'm Isla thinking. and Amarantha exchanged cards. So, cuz I want to secure Boston um Support for this. Boston's here. Oh, wait, that's the wrong wait, thing. Boston support. Boston's no. here. It's supposed Boston. to be Brooklyn's here oh from gosh. the new season. <laughs> <laughs> Boston's here. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, and then I guess you know, the state crossbow Tori's thinking, I think her and Michael's engineering skills could probably. <laughs> 
I mean, Michael's not going to touch that. That's dangerous. I, <laughs> he die. He <laughs> trusts Tori not to hurt him with it, but he doesn't trust himself to accidentally shoot himself with it. <laughs> oh, no. He'll just like watch and hold like a pillow in front of his chest or from like around the corner, peek over, and shout off, shout some advice. Uh, um, in in Woodshop, Tori just makes Michael a shield. So Michael has like, just a wooden shield. <laughs> she uh, at some point stopped by like an army surplus or something. So he's got like a by a legitimate a legitimate crossbow too. <laughs> and probably <laughs> some some, some oh, no yeah, yeah she's not making it from scratch she is not at the wood workshop it's more just um by I some mean it's so technically Stab best. Um, a crossbow bolt is a type of stake if you find a way to make it out of wood Saying. So we've got to be yeah. doing making lots of wooden arrows or bolts. Calities. But yeah, Tori acquires an actual crossbow and uh, goes about modifying things. And... Yeah, I'll pick one up or a longbow for Louie and then a crossbow for Amarantha too. Okay. Uh, I'm also just yeah picturing Michael kind of just like looking around the corner and like shouting suggestions. <laughs> uh, Tori's a red. <laughs> uh tori has that workshop set up within the house so that's kind of just the doors open and it's there's wards hanging up all over the place uh the vampire wards are off in a box in the corner so that michael doesn't get bothered by them uh, and he doesn't even want to look at them <laughs> just, i mean they're in a box uh but it's just a board in a box um, amarantha will set up some blanket forts for you know snuggles in case <laughs> michael's sad that his buddy left, and yeah. As, as Michael shouts, <laughs> as Michael shouts suggestions of what to do with the crossbow, I just imagine at one point Louis walking by from like getting something in the kitchen or whatever, and is like heading back to I don't know how this Airbnb is set up, but heading somewhere where he conveniently passes by the door of whatever room door he's working in, <laughs> and in the midst of Michael's shouted suggestions, <laughs> but dazzle it. And then <laughs> we're probably yes. we're probably outside like this. I think they were like now you see where in I the get covered from, patio. <laughs> I... So maybe he's going back to the covered patio to yell at us from. You said that that was uh, Louis or Blake. Louis. Louis. Uh, just as a joke, Tori takes I guess one of the spare bows or crossbows and uh, turns it into uh, Versailles mode crossbow or <laughs> bow just to be a jerk. <laughs> Uh, Amaranth is going to be gluing little rhinestones onto one of the arrows <laughs> <laughs> that says, fuck you. <laughs> I, Tori will also take some time to carve some slightly nasty uh, things yeah. into some of the arrows. Arrows or maybe the, the rhinestones might mess with the flight pad and you might want to carve something in there. Oh, okay. Put fuck you on the bow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Say actually am going to gonna carve fucking... kindness on mine because I'm going to oh kill God. him with kindness, you know. Kill him with kindness. Yeah. I'm going to put murder. Words. I'm going to put murder on mine because I'm going to kill them with murder. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> uh, Tori does have some other stuff to take care of in sometime in the montage, but it doesn't need to be at the beginning. Okay. Those are our to-do list things. Okay. Yeah, but basically, I mean, whenever the witches get started with their, um, uh, whatever they're planning to do uh, in town, Tori's going to go yeah. help out with that just to lend extra woman power. I was hey. actually going to ask Tori to ask Estella if we can get photocopies of the part of Maria's journal. Ju not anything with the magic-y stuff, just the letters to Samuel, because I'd like to give them to Blake. Yeah, she can put They're them letters to him. He has a right to read them, you know? Uh, yeah, she'll put in that request, give a brief explanation of the situation. They don't have to give anything with, like, any of the magic stuff. It's mm -hmm. just anything that would be, like, vital to them. They don't have to photocopy those pages. But the ones that are just letters, Sam, about things. Yeah. Um, Estella will respond with, like, a rough timeline of when which is they're planning to do their stuff around town and around campus so you can be involved. And 
Stella says she'll get to work on trying to safely photocopy or scan or <laughs> do whatever. reproduce the journal things. I'm picturing a actually a magical photoco photocopier, which is meant yeah. to magically photocopy magical documents. <laughs> It's just a regular photocopier, but it's got like shit. What I am new to. Set your photocopier salt. to magic. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a little like witch hat on the corner of it. That's how it works. <laughs> mm, yeah. No, totally. Definitely 100% accurate. Witch hat on the corner, cat on. The cat has to sit on top of it. So there's also like a photocopy on the edge of it of the cat's butt. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know that thing where like cats uh will loaf and if they're on a glass table you can kind of just see what they're doing with their legs that. yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> she throws a few copies of that in there <laughs> yes yeah just, yes. Uh, just troll blake <laughs> i love it everybody should troll blake <laughs> he's already a meme it's fine mm -hmm. this is true is. <laughs> okay just imagining like comfort blanket fort and snacks for Michael and just all the video games. Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's like, Michael, do you want to play Mario Kart? Eventually, you figure out it's probably some other more chill games. Do you want to play Animal less, Crossing? <laughs> We're getting divorced. <laughs> Michael's uh, Animal Crossing Island journey begins. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> oh my god, that would be amazing. I'll we'll download it. Stardew Valley. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got 20 years to kill. Supposedly. Yes. Hmm. Supposedly. Maybe Vlad just like his constitution couldn't handle it, you know? Maybe it'll be shorter for, for Michael than Vlad. I don't know. Maybe. But she probably prepare for the worst case scenario, and if it turns out better, then eh, it's positive. I, I don't know any of the vampires who have gone through it, so. Well, we'll figure it out. And she'll, like, just put a hand on his shoulder. Hey, we're here for you, though. Yeah, we are. So does he know. <laughs> mm-hmm. My goal You're gonna boo have... great. <laughs> Michael will have Egon choose who he's gonna romance in Stardew. Yes. I, I don't know the options. What are the options? I don't know the options either. Never played it. There's a few. It doesn't really matter. But all of them. The ones that look like Tori and Amarantha. <laughs> everybody. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, you can technically romance all of them. So yeah, sure, why not? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's polyculeception. Oops, all <laughs> polycules. <laughs> Oops. RPG. Random polycule generator. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you do, if Amarantha gets in contact with Isla, mm -hmm. she would. I mean, preferably want to set up like an in person meeting, but if you mm -hmm. just want to have a phone call, you can just do a phone call. Uh, she'll meet with her in person. They can okay. do brunch or something. The brunch that she was supposed to have with Vlad. Yeah. She. Hmm. Yeah, sure. She'll give you directions to a a brunch place and mm -hmm. tell you what time to meet. And it's a very nice place in Boston. On I don't know what buildings there are, and in, in like a taller building, so it gives a nice view of the city. Nice. Um, it's a pretty spacious oh my gosh. Pretty spacious room on a <laughs> higher floor with like a few tables. Definitely definitely one for like the more elite clientele for sure. Mm -hmm. And Isla is already sitting at a table mm -hmm. uh, with and there's two yeah, we'll just say there's a mimosa glass for each of you. Sweet. There's a nice like table set up and stuff, but nothing's mm -hmm. been served yet. So you can have a seat. I also has a interesting combination. She has a cup of tea and she has a mimosa, but 
It works. I, love it. I mean, the, it's the it's the mo- modern day version of Four Loco. You know, <laughs> a little yeah. caffeine with your alcohol. It's fine. Yeah, gotta hydrate while drinking. So, and you need the extra energy so yes. you don't get too drunk, so you can day drink all day. Yeah, there we mm-hmm. go. It makes brunch sense. hack. Yeah, brunch hack. <laughs> we hacked this brunch. I just go straight for the Red Bull vodka. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, she'll uh, hand her a manila folder with like all of the information that she had requested at the first meeting that Vlad did not pr- properly prepare her for. She opens the, the folder and looks through a few of the pages and says, huh. I'll have more time to dig over this later, but... Thank you. And she'll put it in her very fashionable brief case-ish bag. Over the shoulder bag. Mm-hmm. Satchel. Whichever term applies. It's designer. That's all that matters. Yes. She safely texts it away. Says, Please, have a seat. Um, feel free to, if you want something else to drink, I can have someone come over and take your order. Mimosas are perfect. Thank you. And she'll say Excellent. Them. So, um, this brunch was supposed to be with Vlad and Blake, I assume? I-, I think just Vlad. Unless he was going to bring someone else he wasn't going to tell me about, but ideally just Vlad. Okay. <laughs> Did he have objectives for this meeting? I have my own objectives, but... I, if he did, he didn't tell <clears> me. Great. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, I had objectives. Like I had objectives, but they're kind of moot now, so... It doesn't really matter. So apparently you're in charge. Currently. Is that just until he... Decides to come... Like, but... I don't know. Okay. Anyway. It's Let's fine. Um, not bother with that right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, my objective is to garner support from boss, the Boston vampires in our uh, taking over of Salem. That's Makes sense, and um, it seems that we certainly <laughs> Vlad was right in one thing, and that we are fairly alike <laughs> because I was going to willingly offer oh. support if only to get the asshole elders out of my section of the world absolutely i mean long-term plans i mean should definitely talk about expanding the no elder zone um (laughs) i would love to um talk about our plans and maybe get a little more information on how boston is running because you don't have a regent uh, per se, which is ideal, honestly. Um, we're also working with the witches to form a coalition of sorts. Smart. Mm-hmm. I mean, Salem's historically their town. It would be really rude to, <laughs> to have anarchy in their town and not uh, involve them in it. And a waste of a good resource. They are resilient, they're smart, they're powerful. So mm-hmm. it's probably where many previous areas have failed in just not recognizing how they could utilize that. Absolutely. Fear and arrogance. Indeed. So, that is awesome that you were already ready to lend support. Um, And, yeah, 
that's ultimately my goal here. If there's anything you'd like from us or... Oh, probably just a similar sort of agreement, as I'm sure you're mm -hmm. already establishing in Salem, yep. that Salem and Boston essentially have each other's backs. Mm -hmm. If the coalition or supernatural forces ever become powerful enough one day to rival Boston, they wouldn't turn against us mm -hmm. and try to become some obsessive superpower, which would be no better than the current situation we have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think the idea is to not have <laughs> um, a structure that kind of leads towards um, dict dictatorship as you know, different areas have. Oh. <clears throat> There's always a difference between the initial intention and what something becomes. Absolutely. So. Uh, would you like to drop a contract that you feel... <clears throat> I mean, if you're into contracts or if you just want to... I am very into contracts. I figured. I'm also a contract girl myself, but... Um... <laughs> You know, it's just good to establish expectations ahead of time and plan for any... There's... Having a written agreement limits any potential doubt that could come out of something. Exactly. If you would like, <clears throat> I do believe the witches would be open to creating a magically binding contract. And then we could have those who... So we'll have people in place to run Salem in the short term. I'm going to be putting... Blake has agreed to short term. Um, make sure that any, you know, other elders that are, you know, slinking around after Rondo dies. Uh, don't try to power grab. And then there'll be... An elective process with representatives from witches and vampires and humans. <clears throat> Precious just, just wants to play. <laughs> Come, here. Come here. She's like, no. Ten minutes stream. Precious break. We all have to play with Precious. <laughs> yeah, yes. we all have to play with Precious. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. The Christmas sweater just kills me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. She's so cute in it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> precious baby. Look at that. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's thinking about licking your nose. <laughs> hmm. There we go. Blondie's Ooh, like, why? <laughs> I gave her some popcorn. Oh, did oh, you? She likes yeah. popcorn? Yeah, yeah, she tries to steal it out of the bowls, so it's easier <laughs> if I just give her some. I oh, love yeah. that. Fair. A plus. <laughs> but uh, Isla says, I'd be open to considering a magically binding contract. I would prefer to know much more about the process before entering into that type of agreement, but I think a paper document would suffice for the immediate future. Mm -hmm. And once things have concluded, we can <clears throat> explore other options when we have the time. I can draw one up, or you can draw one up that looks good to you, and I'll review it and send you any requested changes. Either way. I can get to work on one. I'm sure you have... Quite a bit on your plate currently, so. Yep. And we're down a couple of people, so. Um, yeah. Got a lot to do. I'm sure. Anything else you want to chat about while we're eating brunch? Is she, does she eat brunch or is she just like sipping mimosas? She eats some brunch. 
she'll have like eggs benedict mm-hmm. french toast for amarantha <laughs> well it's it's not really a current matter since they're much more pressing things but okay. i once all of this wraps up would like a proper chance to sit and talk business absolutely i think that would be wonderful if I survive the next week. <laughs> Which I have no doubts I will. I'm resilient. Well, there's <laughs> there's resilience and then there's vampires, but yeah, don't worry. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> That's a later issue to deal with. Absolutely. And then I guess they just wrap up their brunch small yeah. talk and sure. Get back to it. I okay. love Isla. <laughs> Me too. She's Amarantha in 300 years, okay? <laughs> Alrighty. Um eventually uh, the day and time rolls around for what the witches are doing on campus. Mm -hmm. Bringing a touring of things uh, getting if there's any other times that all of you have gone back to Salem or whatever just like back and forth taking care of things or whatever you have noticed advertisements and, and talk going around about a a drag night with half price drinks at the Red Vale so that's <laughs> yes been the talk of the town ah uh, Tori basically goes uh, straight to Books and Brooms since uh, that is her point of contact for this. Okay. Uh, she uh, she takes her bike in town basically because uh, she doesn't want to deal with like the uh, everything of a car. Fair. <laughs> also, get... she looks really good in a leather jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, are you trying to seduce Estella? Uh, Tori is trying to seduce anyone at any point. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> it's a state of being. It's a state of being. I love it. All right, you can get your books and brooms. Estella is there. Store's open. She's behind the counter. Um, a few people are shopping around, and she like well, actually, a few, a couple of people are getting checked out. So she's ringing them up and bagging them, and uh, sees you, but doesn't make any like uh, doesn't make any immediate obvious movement or indication. And yeah, Tori just vibes around and like browses the books that are there while she waits. Fair. Eventually, the uh, people at the counter get uh, fully checked out their lovely little tote bags filled with yeah. books to their heart's content and they leave. So the two of you are left in the store. Replying for duty. Or whatever y'all need help with. I suppose that's accurate. But yes, give me just one moment. I know Hallie was going to meet us near campus. And she'll go and collect a over-the-shoulder bag. A pretty big tote bag. Mm. And also below the counter pulls out a really nice um sheet of papers that's been put given like put inside one of those sort of document covers with the clear plastic and the oh. um tight binding that holds the pages together without officially binding it and passes it over to you and it's the photocopies of the journal entries for Blake. Thank you. I have a feeling it'll mean a lot to him. And uh, Tori will put that in her bag. With, uh, she's got the bag with the pseudo grimoire and some of her supplies. Cool. Alrighty. Um, are you fine with just walking over to the campus? Sure. Works for me. Okay. Unless you've got limits on parking out here. Kind of like points a thumb at the bike that she has just chilling i don't believe so sure looks to me she'll uh lock she'll 
flip the sign, say that Books and Brooms is closed, and lock lock up the store. And the two of you can head over to the campus because Salem is very walkable. It is so walkable. It's the most walkable. <laughs> oh. All right. So walking this walking. Very walkable city. <laughs> yes. Eventually, you get over to the campus and can easily spot Allie, who is towering over almost everyone in her long, lacy black dress and boots and big, wide-brimmed black hat, because why not? Aesthetic. Yes. Sorry, I'm <laughs> distracted by a dog. <laughs> um. Anyway, and Estella says that we initially, ideally, want to case some locations that could be beneficial. Next week, I know you mentioned the woodworking lab, if that was still an ideal place, or if other things come to mind. I mean, mainly it's got a bunch of spare stakes in storage, so those can be moved, but it's pretty secure. It's got small windows, so it's uh, it's not a terrible place to hold up if like a fallback place is needed, but... We should prioritize probably areas where uh, civilians can be out of the way for now. Okay. All right. Do you have anywhere specifically in mind? You know this campus better than we do. Mm, so Tori's going to point out a few different buildings that are pretty well defensible, have like uh, not too many entrances and exits, but definitely have like at least one of each in like in areas that can be uh choke pointed basically okay uh not that she goes around campus thinking about how uh defensible buildings are all the time that would be ridiculous of course not. <laughs> of course not <laughs> uh, but no as somebody who definitely hasn't uh done any of that at all uh, tori has actually a fair few thoughts about uh this so she points out a few of those buildings um uh goes over just some rough schematics and uh gets to work okay yeah they with all three of you you can get some protective wards set up and any other security measures you'd like to put in place hallie and estella do make some notes about like about certain areas that could be good for setting up extra defensive measures, other areas where it would be good to go, like, go on the offensive, depending on how things escalate, and just get that sort of sense, uh, an escape plan if people become injured and they need to, like, get them out and triage, that stuff. Yeah, I'll say, uh, probably specifically also staking out an actual triage location, uh, for, like, pre-stocking some medical stuff, maybe. Okay. Oh no. Oh no? Am I frozen? Everything is frozen no. on my screen. I can see you. Okay. Then my Can you see us? Uh all of you are frozen. I my even my feed's frozen. Can so. you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, we need your feed. <laughs> and both I... hear and see you. Yeah. <laughs> my computer is just freaking out, I guess. It's fine. Uh, theater of the mind. We were all waving our hands. <laughs> yeah, we were all dancing. Bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully, this resolves itself. We could take a short uh, break to uh, troubleshoot. Uh, sure. I mean, I can't pause anything. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up our love friends from love to cry to live best because we wanna, we wanna, yeah, we just wanna have fun. The trunk's full of wine.
falling We're gonna stay up Have the time of our lives The night is young Don't need anybody else, else. We came to party all night long Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this night away Night away, older the groove and the light the flickers we get lost in the crowd it's getting thicker we get away get away from the drinks and chatter haven't said a word but it doesn't matter Feel the air get thinner. standing in a blurry dream no one else can see us. live your life within the moment Till the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side away Driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up our love friends, we love to. 
But it doesn't matter Okay, uh, <laughs> back after some very interesting technical difficulties and an impromptu break, but was there anything else Tori was doing with the witches around campus besides just 
making things defensible and um, good for the weak people, the weak flesh and blood bags. I mean, I think probably most of the time is spent on that. Um, I don't know if there's spare time, she might uh, stop by woodworking uh, area and make some more steaks just to top things off or you know, just do some other uh, very dangerous arts and crafts. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Okay. Uh, where did my notes go? <laughs> uh, if there's any spare time in between all of that, she'll probably uh, show Estella some of the stuff that uh, she got from Maria's cabin, just in terms of like the drawings of the wards and stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's, you can probably find time amidst everything. Just like a little... Probably like when everyone's feeling a little tired from doing magic, it's just like, hey, we just need like a 30 minute break. Just sit down and enjoy the weather or whatever. The leaves. The colorful leaves stuff. Which picnic on the quad. <laughs> yes. It's just a fall picnic. But she'll look over everything and just kind of be like, ooh, this is some rather intense stuff. Well... She was in a rather intense phase in her life. That is correct. I mean, when we were approaching, there was a really strong ward keeping it out, and we were able to get past, but, like, I mean, there's enough power in that, but just, like, altering the ward a little bit, like, I felt like I was getting electrocuted. So, you know, uh, continuation of the theme of uh, surprisingly not getting myself killed, but getting close to it, possibly. We really need to get you a teacher. Desperately so. <laughs> I mean, if you've got recommendations. I had probably offer a list. I That's probably more of an issue once we get past all of this. Survive the week. Yes. All right. Well, so now I the next week, no, week I'd and a half, month. Prefer to uh, live long enough to actually enjoy the victory and not uh, accidentally magic myself to death. I think that's a reasonable goal. <laughs> Baby steps. So I'm just watching Blondie's tail. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. Excellent. Okay. A plus content. <laughs> Um, I'll say Louie at some point probably locks down a location or whatever for Michael and Toby. Well, so well I guess that'd be probably post, um, mm-hmm. post rebellion. Well, shared. So. Hmm. I mean, looking. I'm sure the vampires heard the conversation with Constantine, but yeah, with their little bat ears. Yep. Um, <laughs> what she will share the information yeah. Michael will go with to look for the locations for a little safe house and Marantha's drawing up the contract between the witches I'd say and the vampires Blake would could um, suggest the lighthouse mm-hmm. safe house the, sure. the Derby Wharf Light Station, the, the the little square dude. Lighthouses are cool. <laughs> we don't have to operate it or nothing, do we? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. It's electric. You don't gotta plug it's on, in. It's on a timer. Change any light bulbs or something. Nope. I don't know how well that would work. Someone else takes care of the routine maintenance. Oh, just, we're just staying there. Yeah. Two of them holding okay. the giant. It makes it easier. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to run up and down all those stairs and then listen. It's not that big. Glass out. It's actually really small. Looking forward to just taking some me time with this. Blondie's making biscuits in the yes. morning. Yeah. <laughs> <I love. laughs> like, cannot look focused. away from it. 
intense. <laughs> I think it's, we yeah, can, uh, we can bring our, if you want, if you want more Stardew Valley, we can we can bring a TV and set up a TV and the Switch. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's co-op. Maybe Toby, Toby and Michael can run their own little statue farm. Oh I my love this. God, yes. <laughs> they start a dating service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to come up with some sort of like cool wordplay. And nope, I got nothing. Uh, what are you gonna do? It's, it's just it's dry today. All my humor is just gone. Maria can be our comic relief. Yeah. I feel like we need an, an emoji for Blondie, like uh, just kneading. <laughs> Making biscuits. <laughs> yes. She's a baker. She's she's going for it. <laughs> Apparently. It looks so <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm why aren't you comfortable so yet? <laughs> just a full body exercise back there. <laughs> Doing cat aerobics. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Cat lobbies. Okay. Yes. Is there <laughs> anything else you would like to do during your preparation montage? Or are we ready to get to it? I think that if there's a free morning, uh, sure there is. Tori is going to uh, drag Michael down to the kitchen, and they're actually going to make croissants correctly this time. Aww, yeah, yeah kind of got all of that got lost up in the hullabaloo. Yeah, I mean, now it's going to leave the dough under the sink this time, so uh, we'll make it work. Yeah. Did we ever find that dough? Yes. <laughs> Eventually, yeah, yes. she cleaned it up <laughs> several hours later it was discovered <laughs> the Where scene of a crime <laughs> the butter had melted it was not worth it and then the next morning Michael was a little preoccupied didn't bother to make the croissants and then... Amarantha will give if Corey pre- procured the, the photocopies she'll mm-hmm. give them to Blake uh, Toriel passes along. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, he will uh, graciously accept them and probably go off to read through them. Yeah. Read them. Read them sadly. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> read them sadly. Well, he, you probably gave them to him and he was like, well, what the fuck is this? And then started reading and was like, oh. I, I was like, I just Goodbye. thought that you should have these. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. That's a, really, that's a really weird comment. Oh. <laughs> Why is there a cat butt in this one? <laughs> That's just the front page. <laughs> it's just cat, cat undercarriage. <laughs> yes. Like, what the fuck is this? It. And then flips two, flips two pages. Is like, oh, oh okay. goes off to brood and read. Mm-hmm. If Louis is doing preparatory brooding, um, Amarantha will just like bother him while he's being broody. Okay. Not Blake. Blake can brood in peace, but Louis can't. Fuck uh, that guy. Nobody <laughs> else can. can I count like my the, dad? Uh, yeah, going around and uh, helping witches with stuff as practicing archaic art. Sure. Yeah. A. Hey. No. Do oh. quite a bit of brooding. <laughs> my spare time here um okay. on any like spare nights or whatever like where everybody's out and busy and stuff uh which michael i don't think was very busy so he might just follow me anyways <laughs> uh, sh- sh- she's gonna go try to stalk moron she wants to kill moron. <laughs> you want to kill moron yeah <laughs> on my kill list. List. i have a list of people that need to die and he's oh on it God. okay <laughs> Sure, you can. Sure, you can track down moron. <laughs> Do you have enough angst to kill a vampire? Mm-hmm. With a cost or without a cost? I have enough. I have ten, so I have enough. 
for no consequence. I rolled really low on that last angst roll, so. But. Are you... Does it also count as getting myself in danger? <laughs> <laughs> or do you want me to antagonize him first? Oh my god. <laughs> Just harass him. I mean, you can harass him first. <laughs> if you Perfect. If you try and harass him while killing him. I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Harass him first and then stab him. Smash yeah. his Instead face and that. that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of pig. Uh, killing him with kindness, <laughs> kill him with verbal abuse. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, no, I'll... I'll hmm, do we want a consequence or not a consequence on this one? Are we? Do we want to be wanted during a war? Hmm. Oh, yeah. We're killing the police. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's six, right? So then eight for no consequence. Correct. I was going to say consequence, but I forgot he is a cop. <laughs> you go away for. I have a very excellent lawyer. <laughs> I have a great lawyer. <laughs> it was self defense. It was sleep staking. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. very similar to sleep arson, but <laughs> with a stake. Yeah. I mean, if you set the stake on fire first. Okay. So we've killed Moron. Uh, do I get a... How do you want to kill him? How do you want to do this, Jenna? <laughs> How do you, you do, do you kill this? him? Uh, first, I'd like, like details. To... I'd like to Just taunt him about it. his demotions. Uh... I assume he got demoted and sure. let him know that I was responsible for it and like get up in his face and like in her sleeve she has a stake and it just like you know down up through the ribs okay yeah he's <laughs> getting super duper pissed off if he had any blood in his body it would be going right to his face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he just gets up in your face and then he gets punctured and then she He's blows him a kiss as he's falling turned down. down. And then, Oop. and I don't know, do their bodies just disintegrate when they die or? That's for uh... telling Rulio he needed to be a doctor. Yeah, you don't get to decide what we're studying. <laughs> um... Hmm. I will say his body goes through like a rapid after you stab him, just like a rapid process of decay. Hmm. Yeah. So just like I always knew you were dead on the inside, moron. Time lapsed. We just speed run the decay process. <laughs> and speed decay. No. <laughs> Does that work? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Yeah. Congratulations. He killed Moron. He I'm solved gonna... he solved my idiot puzzle. Yep. I get to replace one of my moves with a vampire move and I get one vampire flaw. And I'm going to choose practice archaic art, <clears throat> of course. That's what all I'm the kids are doing the these days. The broody yeah. type, you know? <laughs> you don't want to brood? No. <laughs> so sad. Uh, so she's taking practice archaic art. And... Does driving a stick shift count as an archaic art? <laughs> Just asking for no reason. Um, And then I'm going to switch out... Let's see. It's one for one. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna figure out which one. Get someone to meet with you for watch unseen from maybe not. Let's see. No, I need to keep uh I need to keep the get a vampire to do something and also escape unharmed. So I think it does. I think I am going to switch out, um, uh, get someone to meet with you for watching scene from the shadows. 
No, it's die on your own terms for <laughs> die on your own terms for die on your own terms. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'll take um, yeah, watch and scene from the shadows. Okay. You do that. And it's magnificent. Anything else during this montage? Or are we ready for the finale? Did we decide that driving a stick shift was an archaic art? Sure, why not? Sweet, okay. It's I the did. final episode. It's the final episode. Ooh. <laughs> then I'm ready. <laughs> Good to go. Oh, moron. I want him to know it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Brondo it was me. Oh, wait. You okay. can't. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him later. Get wrecked. Get <laughs> staked. Connie's attack on Elton is supposed to be after the... Yep. All mm-hmm. the blue? Mm-hmm. I think okay. we'll have... Five days in between. Okay. It would be uh, pretty sneaky of him to just up and do it, and then... Well, he doesn't get paid if he does. That was part of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> he could just decide it'd be funnier to not. Well, yeah, fuck okay. getting paid. I'm gonna stab well, this guy. Five million dollars is motivational. I've got enough angst to murk a vampire, so... Safe! Um, I, I, think I, I think I do now. All yes. righty. So, we get to the day. Dawn of the final day. Dawn of the final day. 24 (laughs) hours remain. (laughs) We'll make these 24 hours last an entire season. That moon's looking awfully close. (laughs) Better get that ocarina ready. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, how... I mean, what, what is your as a group your game plan for this are you just gonna sit by and watch like how involved do you want to be or do you want me to just paint a movie picture um i mean we have plans that are in place to kind of just function at certain times so we have um uh elton or we can just do like a, a round table and everyone has a chance to describe what happens and we all get input I think Vittori is probably not planning to make any first moves and is more on damage control if things go sideways. Yeah, it, that's Michael's plan. Amarantha will, well, Louis probably won't want to leave Amarantha's side. Um, <clears throat> but she was thinking of um, uh, pulling up on one of the buildings on campus with a good like view of the Dean's building in case Brondo or anybody. You know, like aerial this, cover with yeah. with, with state well, crossbows. So you can probably get up on the library roof. <laughs> yeah. Get a good view of like the quad and stick out. Oh. We'll do aerial No <laughs> <laughs> And the dragon descends. <laughs> Dragons fall, everyone dies. Ah, come, motherfucker. <laughs> My uh Michael will stay on the ground. Kind of okay. walk around. Okay. I'm assuming at some point we've all gotten like Bluetooth headphones so we can yeah. be in a call. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, how far away from uh, the safe location is Michael? Just in case this goes Fra- down. Um, the lighthouse. the lighthouse is very far. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's um, not walkable. <laughs> <laughs> the one time. <laughs> it would take too long to get there if there was, there was like an emergency. Right, has uh, betrayed us with its lack of walkability. <gasps> in that case, uh, Tori is going to request that Michael keep them updated on where he is so that they can uh, retrieve him if things go wrong. Yeah. He'll we'll stick cover around from... on the ground. Is Tori also staying on the ground? Um, If Am and Louie have the high vantage point in the library, Tori's probably going to stick with Michael just so uh, nobody is on their own. Okay. Yeah. I don't. If Toby and Lizzie planned on being here for this, Michael will stay near them. They're not entirely defenseless, yeah. but um, Tori's brought her motorcycle sure somewhere and stashed it. Probably. 
Yeah, Toby and... I don't know why I'm looking up the outdated list on my wall. I haven't printed out new lines and veils. Um, yes, Toby and Lizzie are there. In attendance. Probably not in the midst of things because everyone would be like, why are there two kids here? Yeah. Uh, but like on the outskirts of the quad, just keeping out of the way, yeah. being a little, le little less suspicious with Michael and Tori with them. Yeah, just yeah, holding like... their hands like, mom, daddy. <laughs> yeah, hang hanging out with the older Weird. siblings or something. <laughs> wow, you're in community college and you have an eight-year-old? Hmm. <laughs> Look, we didn't yeah, always no. make good decisions in our lives. That's oh why God. we're at community college. Fair. <laughs> okay, but things get as things kick off, a bunch of students gather on the quad with posters and stuff and are doing their chants and things demanding demanding change and whatnot. Um, I'd say definitely Michael and Louis can tell that there are just regular humans in the midst who are like, oh yeah, you know, I can agree with these talking points um the get out of here idiots public agenda <laughs> yeah yep. <laughs> yep and i'm just like yeah we we'll get behind you know enacting change at our community college and stuff so it's fairly quiet at first but getting louder and a little more raucous and often like off to the side in the distance, we see Blake just slinking through the shadows, making his way over towards the Dean's building. Mm -hmm. And as he, and there's plenty of cover, cover since it's later at night, days are getting shorter, so the sun's already pretty much down. But as, as far as like on the main quad, there's reasonably enough light where it's not pitch blackness and people can still like fairly see and have an idea of where everyone is but it gives enough cover for Blake to make his move and he starts like basically just like spider climbing up the side of the wall to the Dean's building spider Blake spider Blake <laughs> Amaranth is just like watching this like oh, <laughs> I knew that he was Spider-Man can he kill Brandy. <laughs> and as <laughs> you're watching him on the side of the building and the <laughs> the viewer's <laughs> eye is distracted by this show of whatever, you see him like raise his fist and essentially punch through the glass and shatter the window. And as that happens off screen, there's some Chaos breaks out amidst the protest. Some shouts and screams, and that kind of just it kicks off a little bit. And there's like probably not as much immediate panic as you would expect if it was all humans, but the humans have taken notice, and it's not great. So panic ensues. Blake is in a window. What? Classic Blake. Classic Blake. <laughs> Punching through going, the glass. Going through those windows. He's such a delinquent. <laughs> Chewing the scenery. No wonder he likes Tori and Amarantha. <laughs> so, what? I mean, immediately. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? As your attention is pulled in two different directions. Since Michael and Tori are on the, are on the ground, Tori's going to see if she can figure out what the source of the screaming is. You can see through... It seems like someone has... Uh, suppose, like... For all intents and purposes, it appears as though someone has gotten into a fight and either knocked someone down on the ground, possibly knocked them unconscious. Hard to tell because of the crowd, but that is what it appears to be. Okay. Um, anyone I know? 
and you're not sure because of okay. the size of the crowd. It's hard to tell. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Uh, alert Michael to what's going on if he hasn't already looking. Are there any humans in immediate danger? It's a possibility. Crap. Uh, should we just th- go running in there? It sounds maybe not, not a good idea. Maybe not running, but I guess we're it gonna will, like kind of. I can intro. go check it out. Toby says. Toby and, Toby and Lizzie are small. <laughs> and there, no, Toby could probably fuck up someone's shit. Yeah, but, he can get in and out um, small. Good for the even. <laughs> maybe we go along in the same direction, uh, just because yeah, I don't know if I want to stay here. Get a little closer. Yeah. And see what's going on. It's around the perimeter. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a perimeter check. Let's go. And then the two of you can inch around the perimeter and Toby and Lazeal head towards the crowd just keeping low and kind of in- inconspicuous as they head in Amarantha what are you doing uh, she's watching with binoculars to see if she can get a vantage on what the hell is going on in there with what Blake's doing no with the crowd the crowd uh, okay. she assumes Louie's looking to see what Blake what the hell Blake's doing <laughs> okay hopefully Louis definitely seems like he's trying to take everything in, like eagle eye style. Yeah. Get all what the... do your vampire eyes see? <laughs> <laughs> you do have a much better vantage point being on top of the library, seeing into what is going on, and definitely looks like someone got taken down. And there is a like a moment of hesitation where everyone's just kind of like holding the breath, like, okay, what's gonna happen next? Before whoever the person standing over this prone form just turns and starts like throws another punch to the person next to them and then it starts to spread do I recognize any of these people you it's the health and sciences you... dean isn't it <laughs> god damn you, it i, I knew say it. you probably <laughs> you probably recognize a couple of the people who've gotten punched from the red veil people who've like, gotten like punched young, younger vampire I'm, I'm... as vampires yes vampires yeah. We really should have made them wear like a, a red something on their like <laughs> shoulder or something, so I don't shoot them on accident. Should have gotten jackets. With should have gotten jackets. What the fuck were should we thinking? Should have gotten everyone a jest. No. <laughs> yes, matching jests for the protest. Uh, <laughs> oh God, protest, jest, protest, 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 protest. I mean, no. I, I, I am anti-jest. I yeah. just like to put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, oh. now we're all pro-jest. Free. No, no. Free. Jest. <laughs> I know you're pro-pro-jest. Oh, God. So if this I see I anybody in, in the mix that's fighting that looks to be like an antagonist, ugh. I don't know. I just... If I can point, if I see any older, I don't know if I can tell the difference between anarch vampires and just I don't regular know. vampires. I'm and just going to have to yeah. watch it and what I'm going to try to keep eyes on Tori and Michael. If anybody tries to start any shit with them, they're getting an arrow through their eyeball. Okay. You definitely see Tori and Michael skirting around the big, like most of the crowd, just keeping to the perimeter and you catch sight of lizzie and toby heading towards the mass of people as this chaos starts to spread and like the chants die down and they are less focused on reform less less focused on reform and more focused on their form 
um, ah. their forms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. And uh, Sobe and Lizzie kind of get down and duck into like the crowd and sidestep and shove their way through people and duck under legs and stuff. And you occasionally like will lose sight of them and then catch sight of them and it's just a constant back and forth wondering mm -hmm. what they're doing, where they're going. Meanwhile, inside the inside Mr. Brando's office, Blake has smashed through the window and jumped inside and Mr. Brando whirls around from where he was standing facing the door, assuming Blake was going to come through the door. Yeah. And he was essentially like standing behind, standing off to the side of his desk, uh, close to the window. So Blake just jumps inside and gets a hand on his throat and shoves him up against the wall. And says you've gotten up to some very interesting things Nathan very interesting and Brando's eyes are wide and he's quaking in his boots as he <laughs> is Seemingly helpless in this situation. He chokes out. What do you want? Sam. Blake smiles. Yes. <gasps> Sam. Oh my it's god. Sam. It's Sam. It's Sam. <laughs> Dude. <What's laughs> The biggest reveal of this whole I did, campaign. Uh, I did not see that coming. <laughs> and Blake says, "You know what I came here for, and you're gonna give it to me." Extra man bun. <laughs> I came for the long lost double man. No. Tail man buns. <laughs> Making <laughs> man bun, yes. McDouble, McDumble, man bun. I don't know. <laughs> the McFun buns. <laughs> Fun McBun. <laughs> Fun McMan bun. <laughs> Slide back outside to where Tori and Michael are watching this happen as the chaos spreads and the fighting gets worse. You can't, Michael would be able to tell that several of the, some humans are getting caught up in the fighting. A lot of them are on the outskirts, are starting to scatter and run away and get to yeah. safety. Good plan. Mm -hmm. You can see that where some of the, witches have sort of taken up residence on the outskirts they're sort of directing people and making sure they get away safely on the rooftop amarantha a voice Fucking Constantine. Behind you, says. <laughs> Why is he oh, always behind me? <laughs> got yourself into a little bit of a pickle here. <laughs> she whirls around with the crossbow. <laughs> testy, testy. What are you doing here, Constantine? I'm watching the show. Fair enough. You have a pretty good view. I do love a good box seat. If you don't have box seats, why bother, right? It's 
some would argue otherwise, but that was what is Louis the doing? <laughs> most comfortable view. He is snarling. <laughs> <laughs> is oh God, very tense. Is in like this weird position of like wanting to step between the two of you, but also like holding a fucking crossbow. It's like self-preservation versus the urge to protect. He knows I'm armed. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, I've got a trigger finger. <laughs> Noted. You just came up here to, to troll us or you bored? Plenty of rooftops, you know. Yeah, but show's always better with friends. Are we friends now? Hmm. I can be friends with whoever pays me. It's a temporary friendship, but that's not really how it doesn't bother. Oh, okay. That's fine. You know? I find it very sad that you have to wait to find your friends, but sure, Constantine. If you push me off the roof, you won't get paid, so there's always that. I'm aware. If I push you off the roof, I Probably won't have a very good existence afterwards, considering you're... Probably die pretty fast. ...buddy there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Stand down, boy. <laughs> Heal. Do you, does he need a treat? Do you give him treats? Oh my god. He's gonna kill this man. <laughs> <laughs> Should I Thank grab you. a baguette? Croissants, but okay. <laughs> Croiss uh, croissants. <laughs> he also really likes deep dish pizza, but let's. The man's stressed out enough. You don't have to antagonize him anymore. He's not even happy that I'm here right now, so. He doesn't look happy about a lot of things. You know, on we will do that to you. <laughs> Fair enough. And Constantine just goes over and like sits on the ledge of the building. Amarantha like contemplates just pushing him off, but doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks about it for a hot second. <laughs> yeah, Louis is very tense next to you. Uh huh but doesn't make any immediate moves. Came to cause chaos as normal. Hmm. Yep. You should check out what's happening on this side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Down on the ground. I'd say that Michael probably hears some some noise coming off nearby, but rounding the corner of one of the buildings, Estella steps out hmm. and comes up to the two of you. Well, this is certainly not what we were expecting to happen. Uh, not outside of parameters, but certainly not what we hoped for. I can imagine. Any idea of what was going on in there? Someone threw a punch, someone went down, and Blake went through a there. window. Blake went through a window. <laughs> I feel like that might have been on purpose. On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I, a, the correct He's, window? 
he's got his own agenda we know <laughs> i mean i would uh, who knows um and she'll kind of like surreptitiously glance up at the rooftop uh, of the library uh am and louie are looking at in on that one so i trust them to have it covered <laughs> we've got a different problem though this is gonna get out of control sooner rather than later we gotta get people out of here and try and squish it before cops come humans been running already hopefully they'll find their way to the veil but yeah it's chaos in here and i don't cops are just gonna cause more chaos and we don't know if any of them are vampires or not i mean i know at least one oh no not anymore oh (laughs) news to me we can can catch you up on that okay 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 uh, there's probably more co- vampire cops, but <laughs> terrible TV show. <laughs> we could. <laughs> they can only work the third shift. <laughs> <laughs> Graveyard cops. <laughs> <laughs> New show. New BCS Mondays at seven. <laughs> Not another vampire cop. <laughs> Or just another vampire cop cop coming to you from award-winning producer Lance Cash. Cash. (laughs) So, um, Estella says, I'll bro, I could see if we could coordinate some large-scale magic to try and drive the humans off of here. I don't know how quick that would be. I think the humans seem to have it their escape figured out. They're just running. I'm more worried about not being able to tell who's on what side here. Yes. Who's in three-piece suits? Is one side all dressed in three-piece suits? Because I want to shoot those people. (laughs) Is Zero around with his jest? (laughs) Is it a high-vis jest? High-vis jest. Not a high-vis jest. He's he's probably... He's He's got like reflective. thick of it. (laughs) Yeah. The thick of it. I, we should probably um, make sure he's okay since we could try coordinating some sort of magic to drive everyone off, make them want to flee for whatever reason and still fear. That could be an option. It might be the best and option. That's the best option we have. So as long it, as it keeps them from redoubling and trying to protect Brando, then it should work. What do you need? Well, I... I'll need a little bit of time to get around and... get everyone in place. What is your immediate concern? Are you just... make sure it doesn't spread? Yeah. Limiting chaos would be good. If people are running, then they're too busy to worry about fighting. Um... Really, I don't care much about the casualties if they're on the uh, establishment side, but like I said, it's hard to know who's who here. All right. We should have all had jests on. <laughs> if they had coordinated well, jests. The next hindsight, time there's hindsight. The next time there's some anarch revolution in Salem, we can coordinate the jests. We can coordinate the fashion work. <laughs> I'll go it's a problem for later. I'll go get to work. She I wish Runs we had up. garlic water balloons right now and just start throwing those into the crowd. Hey, I, that's a little um, non-targeted, though. That would probably hit yeah. both sides. It would just, like, you know, it wouldn't kill them. It would just, like, up- annoy them enough to get their attention and get them to stop. You know? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Try to... Trying not to react as, like, Tori would. <laughs> All right. As, as a Stella heads off, the yeah, it's basically turning into a riot at this point. There's just shouting and fighting and people are punching and kicking each other and knocking him down. A few people are running, but a lot of it seems to still be here. Um, anyone on the outskirts who Tori or presumably Michael recognizes just like will steady and like send off into a darker direction. Yeah. Yeah. Get you out can- of here. You can definitely get closer in some of the like. There's this one girl who is ba- is basically getting like crushed between two people. Like she's trying to get out, and it's just like a fight on either side, and she can't 
push your way through. Michael, little help. Yeah. He'll just go and move them and grab them. <laughs> <laughs> just picks one of the yeah. fighting people yeah. up and like puts them off. Just the move, side. physically move them. <laughs> move them out of the way, pull her out, and she just nods and says, thanks, and then sprints off. And some like the the fight the crowd pushes outward a little bit and gets on either side of you so you're a little more not quite in the thick of it but not on the outskirts like you'd originally been um still fairly easy for the two of you to keep eyes on each other though so that's a bonus up on the rooftop amaranth that you probably see them kind of getting in the She's mess a little bit looking to see who's fighting with zero if she can, from this vantage point. You said you had binoculars, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, looking around, the zero's pretty easy to spot. Let's be yeah, real. He's a Even big dude with a chest on. Yeah, he's, he's easy <laughs> to spot. He is looking to be fighting some, someone you don't recognize, but very, like, big, burly, shaved head, big man like uh really like tight t-shirt jeans nothing super duper fancy here to here to rough some people up um can i get a clean shot on him oh it doesn't have to be a kill shot just a shot say it's It'll probably be very risky to do so. Without hitting zero or? Without hitting anyone. Because okay. they're they're like near the center of this. So mm. there's a lot of people around them. Okay. Where are Lizzie and Toby? You see them uh, moving through the crowd. They're farther closer to the area where Michael and Tori are. Nobody's messing with them, though? Not yet, it doesn't seem like. They're, they've are they so far gone unnoticed. Like, there, there's there been a couple times where, like, people have gotten shoved and they've gotten caught up in that and just, like, mm -hmm. jostled around, but no one's physically them, yeah. targeted them. Okay. <clears throat> then I guess I'm just watching to make sure nobody's Messing with Tori, Michael, Toby, or Lizzie. I was going to try to help out Zero, but uh, I don't want to accidentally hit a human or <laughs> okay. somebody. I feel like Zero right. won't be happy with me if I ruin his jest. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep the jest clean. <laughs> Got him through the shoulder of the jest, and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Gotta keep the jest clean. Well. <laughs> You um, have to hit vampires in the heart, right? <laughs> like that's a that's the thing. Like they could still take like a thigh arrow, right? <laughs> Should I test it on Constantine right quick? No. <laughs> that's a choice. <laughs> no, that be a that will end very well. <laughs> uh, simultaneously on the battlefield, two things happen. But before we get to that, Ooh. back in <laughs> back in Brownda's office. Bla uh, yeah, Blake is up in Rondo's face and just hisses, where's the necklace? And Rondo shakes his head and says, what necklace? <laughs> Idiot. Blake just takes a like big sigh. Don't use up the rest of my patience. Nathan. Where is it? And if he was human, there'd be a lot of sweat just dripping down Marlon's face. Yeah. It, there'd be sharp scent of ammonia. <laughs> Watch your shoes, Blake. Watch your shoes. <laughs> the forest. The forest. 
<laughs> what forest? The one, the one out there. Blake just shakes his head and pulls him away from the wall and starts forcibly walking him towards the door. And as as they get within a few feet of it, he looks down at this like uh this like trip wire in front of the door. And Blake just says You were always shit at this kind of thing. And he picks him up by his neck and opens the door and like sets him over the trip wire and follows him out and just like starts walking him down the hall away from here. Back on the quad. Toby is making his way through the crowd with Lizzie when an arm wraps around. Or not an arm, a hand wraps around Lizzie's arm and yanks her back into the crowd. And while that happens, a hand lands on Michael's shoulder and pulls him into the crowd and a voice at your ear says well there you are hello father I've come to kill you we <laughs> <laughs> paid somebody for that I don't know yeah <laughs> Uh, my name is Michael Grimbrood. You are my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> Michael spin quickly with an elbow out just to try and clear some room. Look you, you managed to get the hand off your shoulder, but as you spin around, you come face to face with Elton. I'm you. not... Really, that surprised to see you here. <laughs> I thought I might be, but I'm not. Well, we talked two days ago. Two so, days ago. three days ago. No, a week ago. Sorry, <laughs> my brain. <laughs> when you're immortal, we time just doesn't exist. We At some last point. Week. At some point in the past <laughs> two weeks. Well, you could have left. <laughs> oh, come on. We know you're. We both know you're not that stupid. Well, I don't know. It's kind of boring around here, so maybe you got bored and left. But, you know, <laughs> you didn't. You're here. That's right, I didn't. Why don't the two of us go have a chat? I'm supposed to be meeting somebody, so I don't want to do that. Also, the last time I went out to an alley for a yeah. chat with you. <laughs> Learn <my> lesson. <laughs> you can meet. You can meet up with them later. No one take very long. I can talk you. Yeah. In the middle of fucking yes. <laughs> he yeah, do it for the aesthetic. Puts his hand back on your shoulder and his fingers dig into the muscle. Painfully so. Now. I'm going you to... should do what you're told. What are you going to do? Use four oh. angst to drive off another vampire. Ooh! With a consequence. Okay. Um, yeah, with a consequence. You, okay, I'm gonna say the consequence of driving off Elton in this moment is that you will put him directly in Toby's path. Ooh. I don't know that, though. Can... But you as a player can decide yeah, whether you want to take that. Would Amarantha be able to get a clean shot on him if that happens? Toby's shorter. Uh, <laughs> you shoot right over Toby. Sure. Head. Sure. 
I don't because necessarily they're have closer, to kill Alton. I just want to make a point. They're closer <laughs> to the edge of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So it's thinner. Not as much going on. Yeah, I, I'm still going to drive him off. Michael doesn't know okay. where Toby is. Okay. And he's been a vampire longer than Michael has, so he probably mm -hmm. will be fine. How? As he does that, Ham's going to try to shoot him right through the shoulder. Okay. Shoot Elton. Okay, how are you going to drive Elton off? I'll grab his hand and remove it from my shoulder. Bits of sweater comes out. <gasps> I'm not gonna not the go sweater. With, I'm not going anywhere with you anymore. Stage I'm not danger. doing that. And just no like, means no, Elton. Push him away. Change then, danger. Yeah, <laughs> as I push him away, he'll like slip into the crowd and go find Tori. Okay. The yeah, he falls backward and just the momentum and the way the crowd is moving takes him away from you and you can you didn't get he didn't he didn't manage to pull you too far away just because of the push and pull of the crowd so it doesn't take much to go find go and reunite with Tori but as Elton slides backwards and gets pulled into the crowd uh Toby is currently turning in circles uh shouting for Lizzie and as he spins around he comes face to face with Elton who is standing over him. And Toby freezes for a second, just stares up at him. Little little hands curling into fists. And time almost freezes as this happens and Elton starts to take a step forward towards Toby and Amarantha releases the crossbow shot. Um, and then she's going to immediately duck behind Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Amarantha releases the crossbow shot in slow motion. <laughs> it sails through the air towards the crowd and impact. Hits, goes through like the back, back to front of Elton's shoulder. It's the front of the crossbow, like just sticking out of his chest as he like follows the momentum forward. Um, yeah, you shot him and then you ducked down, and Constantine. Constantine, like, blocking his view of her, so it looks like Constantine did it. <laughs> Constantine just, like, looks over his shoulder and looks down and just shrugs. Like, eh. I'm bothered. Nice his shot. feet a little. <laughs> oh, yeah, his feet. He's totally dangling those legs over the, over the, over the edge of the roof. 100%. <laughs> and Elton just looking looking around up at the rooftops trying to find uh where the source of this crossbow bolt came from but Toby is similar to to the conversation he was having with Michael and Amarantha about Elton potentially having to die in all of this he is starting to get worked up and then sort of catches himself and Gets his breathing under control. And just without a word, with Elton being distracted by the crossbow bolt in his shoulder, Toby is gonna pounce. Oh. Get, him. Get him, Toby! Huh. Yeah, just a little like <laughs> monkey. Feral child. Monkey. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And and the other part of the crowd where Lizzie was grabbed by another hand, she swings her little backpack holding Lord, what was it? I forgot his name. I forgot the animals, the stuffed animals named. Mm. I, oh, took, I wrote that down. Hang on. It's, that was uh, important. I wrote it Sir down. Sir Gregory the Third, I think. Yeah, something like that. I, I want to say Gary the Third. Gary. Gary the Third. Thank you. 
I knew it was a G name. She uh, swings her little backpack with Gary the Third in it around at whoever grabs her. Easily makes contact with the side of their face and says, "Let go of me!" And then <laughs> pulls free and just starts kicking ankles Ooh. and yeah. then knees. Get him. And then away. stomachs. How far away from us is this in the crowd? Um, sort of far. I'd, I'd say you could probably, since her voice is a higher range, you could probably catch her exclamation over the noise of the crowd, so you have an idea of where she's located. All right. Um, has Michael made his way back to Tori yet? Yeah. All right. Tori just kind of like gives him a very quick hug. It's like, what happened? And ha stake out and just kind of like back to Michael. I figure they're like kind of doing a back to back situation because this is chaos. And like, uh, I pushed Elton away and I'm probably going to get rid of this sweater when we're done here. Okay. <laughs> Burn it. I just kind of shoved him into the crowd. So I um, should avoid going into there. Okay. Why? Uh, I can't tell what's going on in here. We should get some distance. Yeah, anyways. we should probably move. See if we can find Toby and Lizzie. Yeah, so we're going to move out of the crowd if we can to try and get a better vantage point for what the fuck's going on. Yeah, you can, with a little bit of effort and pushing and definitely thanks to Michael's superhuman abilities, you can get out of, you can break free of the crowd since you weren't sucked too far into it. He's going to scoop up Tori and just put her on his shoulders so that way she's got a better vantage point. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, All right, now, what can I see? Let's see. You can probably see... <laughs> you probably see a stuffed animal getting flung <laughs> around <laughs> off to the left in the crowd. And then off to the right, you probably see something going on with Elton. He's not looking like he's having a good time. Can't see what's happening to him now. No. He'll, like, get pulled down into the crowd and then, like, essentially, like, he's coming up for air and then just get, like, dragged <laughs> down again. <laughs> see, Elton, he keeps getting pulled down. Not sure what's going on with that. I think I see where Lizzie is. That... That was a very impressive kick to the nuts for a person of her size. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go see if we can scoop Lizzie out of there then. Yeah, works for me. Small but mighty. Yeah. And uh, Tori will sort of uh, probably getting down from his shoulders because this is going to topple over sooner or later yeah. in this crowd. Uh, we'll uh, have them circle around the outside to like find the shortest distance from the outside of the crowd to where Lizzie is. Yeah, for sure. You can get around there and as you're getting uh... As you're getting closer, you just hear various exclamations and huffs from Lizzie. More backpacks swinging through the air. And uh, you get around to her and you just... She finally just, like, stops and puts the backpack back on and puts her hands on her hips and says, Now stay down. I love everything <laughs> about this. You good? Her hands. Oh yeah. Where's Toby? I don't know. I got pulled away and he I think went somewhere off that way. She's gonna Bluetooth in to Tori and Michael. Uh Toby's fighting Elton. Uh oh. I shot Elton through the shoulder. Uh, because he was coming at Toby. And then they got into then Toby like pounced on him and Ooh. they appeared to be in a fight i assume that i can kind of see where the scuffle is between them mm -hmm. and i'll like just kind of tell like you know 15 feet to your left i don't know i'm just making up i don't i don't have a map or anything i'm just making things up right, right now on our way there we should hmm. help do you toby. have do you have eyes on the dean's office uh louie's watching the dean dean's office and she'll just like but uh blake and the dean have left the building oh. or are leaving the building Who's leading that? Ah, uh, Blake. 
Oh, okay. Is it a prisoner si- good, prisoner dude. situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're going to find the necklace. Louis okay, it says Louis pipes up hearing your half of the conversation, Amaranth then says, We should probably get some eyes on them. Uh, I think that's you, buddy. See if you can he just looks <laughs> at Louis. <laughs> He just looks at Constantine. Out... Constantine's what, not and... gonna kill me if I go off the roof. He doesn't get paid. His bottom line is money. <laughs> Louis, like I'm absolutely not leaving you with Constantine. <laughs> okay, so tell Constantine you... to go follow him. Michael, well, I could ask. That is oh. part of his job, technically. Might risk him fighting with Blake, though. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to do that. Why don't you, Tori, can you guys grab Toby and make your way up to the, or send Lizzie up to the roof? We can try. Just keep an eye and see if you can tell us where which door they leave from when they get out. Or yep. which window. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they're going out. And uh, Tori will throw an elbow and uh, start making her way through the crowd to uh, wherever Toby and Elton are. Okay. You can push your way through the crowd, get over there, and see that it's... Although Toby originally got the um, the leg up in this, in this situation because of the unexpected crossbow bolt through Elton's shoulder, uh, it's very obvious that Elton is not taking things easy on him it's very rough without going into detail it's i mean toby is holding ground but so tori's got some interesting stakes uh stashed away she's gonna pull should we just i don't know i guess yeah we should probably try and stop elton uh she's gonna gonna pull one that if it works correctly should stun him for long enough to get Toby away from him. She's not aiming to kill because uh, having both uh, Michael and Toby go down right now would be a liability. Yeah, that's why Amarantha wasn't going for a kill shot on Elton. Yeah, so we're she going was, like, to clean through the shoulder. <laughs> we're trying to incapacitate. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This sounds like an escape on harp. That is the goal. Um, I'm curious to see what complication you're going to throw at me, so I'm only going to do the uh, three on that. (laughs) We're all saving angst to kill a vampire. (laughs) Unharmed. Okay. Uh I will say this stake does not go as planned. Uh Uh-oh. You do manage to stun Elton. But there is like some ricochet effect that catches Toby. So he's oh, no. also incapacitated. Grab it. Um Tori's got enough muscles to pick up a vampire child, I think. So unless he's heavier than he looks, in which case maybe not. Mm. Um Michael can. I, there's only so much muscle a, the body of an eight year old could build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what he's we're doing body is building um, eight year old. Interposing an arm, pushing Toby back, as hoping he goes with it, stake. Uh, to Elton and then sort of just like pulling Toby back while the stake does its work because Toby's stunned so we're just gonna have to move him scoop him and go mm-hmm. uh, sort of push him in Michael's direction because Michael can uh, maneuver with him more easily than uh, Tori can and we're gonna book it okay you Blake's take down... taking the Dean somewhere we gotta catch up with them okay you take down Elton with the stake Toby gets caught in the crossfire, goes limp, but you can manhandle him off to Michael, who can like throw him over his shoulder, and like then a sack of potatoes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then uh, bring Toby here Lizzie, before you go after the dean. Lizzie will push like Michael with Toby to kind of lead the way, and then go and like grab Tori and get behind her to watch to watch the rear essentially. Yeah, we'll and take up the of- rear. All of you can make your way with some effort out of this crowd. Um, yeah, we're gonna... We gotta find a way to get him up to the roof with where Anna is. She can watch him. Mm-hmm. And 
presumably seeing that Constantine's up there, Tara's gonna be like, or not. <laughs> what the fuck? Louis up here, it's fine. Um Okay. She'll she'll make her way down to let them into the library or whatever. Okay. You can do that. And it'll definitely take some time, but you can get all this coordinated and handled in the scope of the fight. Yeah, and then uh, Tori and presumably Michael, if he's coming along, are going to book it to go find out what the hell's going on. Like, yeah. yeah. In that time, I'd say that Louis probably gets a vantage point on where they exited the building and can send you in that direction. Um, Did we get eyes on where Estella went? No, but I can look. Not e- immediately. I, as, I mean, as, because Blake and Brando are headed off the opposite side of the campus, mm-hmm. skirting around there, you probably catch sight of either her or who you are most certainly sure are some of the other witches, like, moving around and doing stuff. So, things are happening in the background, for sure. Okay, um... In that case, Tori's going to trust the people still here to keep an eye on it and go follow that vampire. Okay. New reality, not a reality TV show, a new like (laughs) comedy, whatever. Follow that vampire. New reality (laughs) TV show from Lance Cash, Super Hollywood producer. How I Met Your Vampire. How I Met Your Vampire. (laughs) The... So Lizzie, Tori, and Michael pursue Blake and Brando, who are moving fairly quick, like not super duper human speed, but fairly, like they're going at a good pace away from campus, headed towards the edge of a nearby, like, nature area with trees and whatever, you know, mm-hmm. naturey things, grass and plants and yeah, bugs. And bugs. <laughs> and bugs. <laughs> I don't know Lots what else to say. I don't know how else to describe it. Mosquitoes. <laughs> forest. That's not really a forest. And you can follow after them and get into the woods. Are you going to try and flag them down all or just follow at a distance? Um, follow I don't know if distance. you have enough angst for watching seen from the shadows. Can that be done moving? I don't know. Uh, watch on. I can do that uh, safely. Probably. Yeah, I'll watch unseen from the shadow safely. So are you gonna go ahead and tail them, like yeah. move ahead of the rest of the group. Um. Uh, Leave Tori and Lizzie together. Yeah. Oh, I thought Lizzie stayed with Toby. Uh, if she's with us, then that probably changes the calculus. Um. Well, now you've got backup. That's true. That's true. Yeah, if, my, if Michael's hiding, house. then um, that sets up a potential ambush where things go sideways. Okay. If he'd be down with that, I don't want to impose. Michael scouts ahead, unseen from the shadows, while Tori and Lizzie take up the rear. Gregory the third, locked and loaded. I'm just I'm picturing like. A uh, little stuffed animal, but like full of like or Gary the Third. I keep forgetting his name. <laughs> like beans or rocks or something hard that could just be used to like silver. knock someone out. <laughs> Those like s- like silver beads or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, pull with them, the... like... <laughs> just there's a zipper on the back of Gary the Third. Opens it. What do you have there? A brick. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. So Michael scouts ahead, uh, leaving Tori and Lizzie to come up the rear. You get close and hear Brando is just basically pleading for his life. It's very pathetic. Mm. So very pathetic. Could at least try to fight, you know? Whatever. And Blake is just dragging him along by his neck. (laughs) It's it's fine. Jenna plays with all the zoom filters. (laughs) (laughs) But it uh, takes a while. Eventually, Brando's like, there, that tree, it's that one, okay? It's that one. And Blake goes over and just shoves him to the ground and says, dig. (laughs) And 
he starts digging. And takes a, takes a little while, but eventually pulls out a little box and turns and and uh, holds it out to Blake and says, See, I told you it was here. Now, you got what you want. Let me go. Come on. Let me go. <clears throat> Blake just opens the, opens the box, nods, tucks it away somewhere. Th- uh, fantasy physics. Tucks the box away somewhere that can logically be held. I don't know. And His puts it in the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> the hoodie pouch. Shows it in the hoodie pouch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then uh, wraps his hand around Brando's throat and says, come on. I know you're stupid, but you really can't be that stupid, can you? Mm-hmm. And Brando goes to choke out something else and Blake gets like puts his other free hand on his shoulder and then <laughs> basically like rips his head off. <laughs> yeah. Just basically decapitates I him. I mean, I always knew he was a bad bitch, but damn. <laughs> Internally, Tori's like, that's kind of hot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rethinking the man bun here. <laughs> <laughs> no, the man bun's still not hot. <laughs> it's an offsetting effect. <laughs> Lose points for the man bun, get points for the instant decavitation. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's just that's how he rolls. <laughs> but Blake just kind of lets out a breath and turns and is like going to head back out of the forest and probably eventually, unless you're trying to retreat ahead of him, he'll run into Tori and Lizzie. Sit down. Yeah over okay she makes sure nothing's exploded she'll just turn right back around yep and she'll uh bluetooth michael to give him an update if he didn't or film and i think he didn't he watched all of that Probably. yeah mike michael would have seen all that all right blake uh, just um I, I imagine he was like off to the side and then because he was watching unseen blake just turned and like walked past him without even noticing camouflage sweater <laughs> yeah yeah Camouflage sweater. Uh, but yeah, you can start Stealth heading back sweater. towards campus. And I, a while, uh, a little bit after, because the trek was, it was not super fast. It, it took some time. So uh, a little <coughs> bit after they depart, there is this sense of unease falls over campus, like this very strong sense of unease. And Amarantha, it's like you're kind of like, mm, and have the urge to like turn and leave. But um, you can see that everyone down below in the quad starts to like. Initially, it's like a slow of people just on the outskirts of the, fu- the fight begin like turning and like leaving and leaving the quad. But then it gets a little more rushed and everyone just starts to scatter, essentially. So it's... everyone single file. <laughs> no pushing, no running, <laughs> no pushing Walk. hands in, in the train. <laughs> on your left and right, you will see two exits. Mm hmm. <laughs> Please locate Please your nearest exit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not <laughs> too much longer before the quad basically empties of people. And eventually, Tori and Michael and Lizzie and Blake come back to an empty quad. Something weird went over. She'll, she'll like relay this to Tori. There was some weird energy. The vibes Maybe. were all off, and then everybody left. Constantine Constantine says it was spicy. Might be Estella. <laughs> she said she was going to do something to get people to run rather ah, than fight. Got it. 
Wasn't sure on the timetable on that. Thank you. Spicy, spooky. Whatever you're into, Constantine, I don't judge. <laughs> We're headed back your way. It's, it's done. Great. We're on top of the library. Constantine's here, just to forewarn you. Saw the legs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're friends now. She says just like flat toned, no expression <laughs> to it. Great. <laughs> I love <laughs> having friends. <laughs> this isn't gonna bite us in the ass later. <laughs> How long before he does what you Five contracted days. him to do? Okay. No, now, wait. So it's probably. five days from then, so probably two days, right? Two or three know. days, a few days. We have two or three days. We've got to keep an eye on that then. Uh, Elton seemed particularly interested in both Toby and Michael, so I don't trust him to do nothing in that time. Well, uh, we can't, we should probably not leave Salem at this point. Um, I mean, we've got the safe house set up. We've got to, got to make sure the civilians are okay. Up, we've got to- Ward up the, D, the, Air, the Airbnb. I assume that we already did that, though. Yeah, we set up a few safe houses, a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gotta make sure that the uh, establishment isn't going to re uh, get their shit together and try to... Forgetting the word. I say as a player, not a character. Hostile takeover. <laughs> yeah. Try not to regroup. And, mm-hmm. Uh... Mm-hmm. Where is El... Did I see Elton leave? Or is he still stunned on the ground, like just laying in the quad by himself? Uh, he. So, someone probably helped him out of there. Yeah, he's not uh, there. Okay. Yeah. It probably It would have been smart for, for Constantine to grab him and just like chain him up for a few days. I mean, unless it was part of the deal. For now, we should take stock and make sure everybody's as safe as they can be and keep an eye out because I don't fucking trust anyone here. Mm-hmm. So head back up to the rooftop of the library, I guess. She just looks at Constantine. Are there any other elders that are going to come sniffing around? Mm-hmm. Immediately? Probably not. Uh, eventually, I wouldn't be surprised if someone didn't show up. I don't know if they would start shit necessarily right away, but people are going to be curious. Fair We're going to they're going to want to see if uh the next in line is as weak as Brando. He's yeah. not. Hopefully. That's for them to decide. Mm. I'm just saying that I can confidently say he isn't. Anybody who's willing to feed flaming hot Cheetos to squirrels is <laughs> somebody you don't want to fuck with. That's true. <laughs> uh, on the ground, uh, Tori will look at Blake and say, Ready to play, King? We should have gotten him a crown. Just call me. Where's my tiara? <laughs> Just call me the Pirate King, I guess. <laughs> nice. Hey. Pirate Lord of Salem. If the swashbuckle fits. <laughs> We're going to have to get him a tri-corner hat. I'm sure he's got one stored away somewhere. <laughs> that went down with, with his ship. <laughs> it will go down. He'll need, if, it, if it wasn't... If it was retrievable, it probably would have been so waterlogged and decayed by the time he got out of there. Yeah. That'd have been awful. Fair enough. That's, that's fair. Yeah. We'll have to get him a new hat. But... Yeah, I think we can head into like an epilogue-ish wrap-up. Yeah! About what happens now that you've successfully uh, taken Salem. Removed the regent and quelled a potentially disastrous rebellion. But in fulfilling the terms of the deal a few days later, Constantine goes after Elton <clears throat> has and had enough time to hook something up that he he got rid of Elton. Ugh. Yeah. That's a loose thread that 
Um, we're friends funny. now. <laughs> he got his he got his paycheck and went on his merry way. That's fine. He's probably going to like London or whatever to see what happens there. Yeah. But Not that it's bound to be interesting. How is uh how are Michael and Toby feeling in the wake of that? Pretty bad. Sick. Yeah, yeah, sick. But definitely, like, don't want to get out of bed. Just you got the Corona, Cyrus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, leave meeting. Uh, leave meeting. <laughs> Thank God Bye. this is our final episode. <laughs> Maria just undownload Zoom again. <laughs> Un- uninstall Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> they feel bad yeah they i have feel no bad. regrets <laughs> but blake takes his position as the temporary regent of salem uh lizzie basically acts as his yeah. right hand yeah for the time being things are initially things are uh so far well with the wishes as that kind of gets in order and stuff. Isla is very helpful. Mm-hmm. The resources that she can provide. What? Yeah, what? What are the rest of you? What are your long-term plans? Well, we purchase a home in Salem. Okay. You get a new house. Because the flat is contaminated. It's, giant it's contaminated. <laughs> oh my god. Constant curse. Uh, I think that uh, Tori will eventually go and disarm it just to make sure nobody um, gets themselves blown up or something. <laughs> yeah, we That's move fair. the rest of our stuff out of there. Yeah. Move it into the new place. Um, we watch with popcorn to see if Bluey ever happens because, you know. Um... <laughs> uh, Tori in the short term at least uh spends time just michael's probably not feeling up to baking so she can help out with that and bring him stuff since uh that's what you do when for your friends who are sick when people are sick yeah. and uh when she's not doing that she's probably um going and helping with whatever um nascent government structure is happening at the moment i'd say there's some the there's a wholesome Mutual pining. Aww. Bluey love story going on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Next new uh. exclusive con- coffee content. I could just write a whole romance novel for yes. everyone. Yes. I love it. Eventually, I don't know how soon this would be because it depends on the timeline of like. Well. Maybe sometime in as acting as the stand in regent and the background love story happens. Uh, Blake is like, eh, stay, staying in Salem and probably at some point does eventually, even if he doesn't go back to a life at sea, gets like a boat, a small like pleasure boat or something like a small like sailboat. <laughs> um, names it the Maria. Aww. Aww. That's sweet. Gets a dog. <laughs> yes. What Aww. kind of dog? Names it Constantine. No. <laughs> yeah. um, just kidding. <laughs> I feel like... Hmm, I feel like a, a golden retriever would be good. Or like maybe like a lab. Aww. Like a black yes. lab. I love this. Does the dog have a little bandana with pirate like skulls on it? Yes. <laughs> I yes. need this in my life. Absolutely. If, if I'm sure if Blake doesn't get it, Amaretha would. <laughs> oh yeah. She bedazzles a little like yes. Oh my God. Yes. A little scarf bandana for the dog, for sure. Um yeah. I think that they live happily ever after. Set up the government so they don't have to be in charge of shit. I mean, if Blake wants to stay in charge, I guess that's fine. Mm, I assume that we'd have an election. It it probably wouldn't be, like, in the interim where he was acting as the regent. Probably not as bad as he expected it to be, but still just, like, this is too messy. Just let me, like, chill and sunbathe on my boat with my dog. 
That's fair. I figure we probably set up a he's the regent on paper thing leaves the ruling to there were discussions of a council so Tori is gonna do what she can to help set up a sort mm-hmm. of joint rule with uh, witches vampires. Yeah, we want to okay. set up something like they have in Boston. So asking Isla lots yeah. of uh, questions Isla about it and give lots of advice and be a good like advisor for the whole process. Mm-hmm. They set up the treaty between Boston and Salem, you know, all of that stuff. Mutual and then, defense you know, pacts. Mm-hmm. Mushy proposal from Amarantha to Michael and Tori. Like, <laughs> even though it's not legal for us all to get married, we should probably have a wedding. I mean, <laughs> it's legal with witches. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is we'll a have wedding? A Stella preside over it. <laughs> What's a wedding except a super fancy party? Yeah, exactly. That's true. Tori eventually gets witch training. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tori does not get herself killed making warts. Oh, on That's Michael's good. lesser sick days, he opens a little French bakery in Salem oh, and oh. names it La Rousse Fugues. The fiery redhead. Oh, and he'll train as many people as he can, and they'll offer a vampire only menu as well. Ooh. With blood light, and we got yeah. different flavors. Yeah. Like a red wine flavor. So that way, vampires have a place <laughs> they can go. Oh. It'll be open 24 oh. hours, and they'll have a little place they can go if they want to hang out. That's oh. not the bar. Love that. I imagine there's also a great, a very lucrative business deal between Amarantha and the oh, Reveal. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, you know, expanding to other clubs with any contacts that Isla has and contacts that we have in New York, New York and stuff, just starting kind of the underground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the vampire speakeasies. <laughs> yes. um, about a year after all this uh, goes down with the revolution question mark uh tori <laughs> the revolution uh every now and then tori will just kind of like go to the uh storage area in boston and just kind of like stare at the drawer that she has the emergency ward set up in, and she doesn't disarm it for a long time but eventually she uh about a year after she goes in and dismantles it finally it's very since it's been so long it was in place for so long when you first dismantle it it definitely feels like there is some piece missing now mm-hmm. just from where the magic has disappeared yeah it'll heal over time but she kind of just catches herself on the wall and uh, she specifically went there by herself but are you okay? trying to <laughs> I'm fine, Eden. Thanks. Uh, she's uh, trying to learn to trust people so, uh, with their own well-being. So she uh, dismantles it and uh, tries to uh, not think about when she'll need to do another one. Yay. Anything else anyone would like to add? say a few years in she probably starts up the uh, uh, immortality quest again because <laughs> she doesn't know when to stop okay there starts be- bugging people to make them immortal not like that Toby <laughs> have you thought about siring anybody <laughs> no <laughs> Lizzie don't the, not Tori style, but no. <laughs> and she starts looking into it again after a while because uh, for as much character pro- progress as she makes, uh, she's still not there yet. Um, well, I'm sure that Michael will start having anxiety at some point that we're going to die. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you guys are gonna have to ask Blake and Louie for that, though. I don't want to be in charge of anybody. I say no, so it's Blake it is! <laughs> <laughs> I'd say eventually, if there's nothing else anyone wanted to add, one, that was a little closing scene, one summer evening when all of you were out on the on Blake's boat, the Maria, mm-hmm. just enjoying 
the evening, maybe with like some drinks, some snacks, chilled blood light, getting some dog cuddles. Off in the distance, you hear a faint howling. <laughs> and that is where we can wrap up this campaign. Teen's <laughs> a werewolf now. Uh, Sad Vampire Boyfriend 2, Electric Boogaloo, Werewolf Edition. <laughs> <laughs> electric Boopaloo. Ooh. <laughs> For all those snoots we can be booping. That's what that's what Amarantha would do, and that's how she would die is by boopsing a werewolf. <laughs> oh my God. Like, oh you snoops. snoops. <laughs> and there goes yep. my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. As we've after all these years, we've wrapped up Sad Vampire Boyfriend. This micro one page RPG. <laughs> several we months. For this... 15 sessions. 15 sessions. Oh. Oh, like 60, more than 60 hours of play, everyone. <laughs> I'm great at running short games. Somewhere, <laughs> the best. Four or five months later. <laughs> what was supposed to be six sessions. Yeah. Purely tripled. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're excited. I mean, I think this was a very, very lovely ending to everything that we had, we were building up to. I'm very excited to get into You're Not, You're Not a Wizard next and then see what our next campaign is about because superheroes. <laughs> so until then, stay cool and kooky and have an awesome 2013 2013 20, 2023 <laughs> wow <laughs> we can fix it in post we can fix it in post oh. Just take it from the top <laughs> that's it for me <laughs> good night. Build a time machine bye bye yes <laughs>